when you really master something you're able to, first of all to explain it like you would to a to a 5 year old and secondly you're able to practice it the practices become very simple and it's that the profundity is in its simplicity you're listening to the woman of value podcast you are about to hear the story of a woman who is following her dreams and passions and creating positive change in the world My guest today is Smita Joshi. She's the author of the Amazon bestseller Karma and Diamonds trilogy, a journey of self-discovery across continents and lifetimes. It's a story inspired by real events from her life and it centers around how to find your inner voice, the intelligence of the wise conscious part of you that exists beyond your ordinary awareness, known as Atman in Sanskrit. It has the power to guide you to live your best life. She's a TV presenter and she has a YouTube channel, the Self Discovery Channel. Smita has been interviewing leading politicians, entrepreneurs and global gurus. She also creates videos on topics of personal development and emotional and spiritual intelligence. Welcome to the podcast, Smita. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you. What does woman of value mean to you, Smita? I think a, for me a woman of value is somebody who has really so is sources herself from her values literally so it's it's about having got clear about your values as in like what your personal values are your core values things that are really important to you in life so that they become the foundation the drivers uh from which you live your life every decision everything that you do in life every single little thing you know is uh, really sourced uh, or rooted perhaps in those values so being true to yourself you know perhaps freedom the element of freedom those are things that speak to me personally and they're very very important to me i will fight for those values till death in fact i'm just releasing a video very shortly on my channel it's about core values and um in the core values i in in that video i have i i came across as i was researching i came across uh something of called a litmus test by uh, a woman called adriana girdler and she she's got these four questions about about how you know whether your core values are really your core values and i love those questions because those questions are ones where which you know if somebody paid you a, a million dollars or more you know um for doing something that was going against uh, your core values would you do it and I, and i and you know that's those are such amazing like you think they're obvious but the answer is not that obvious because there are some things once you get really clear about who you are that become non-negotiable in life and so a woman of value for me is somebody who who has truly found taken the trouble to to go through that process and to to be get clear about who she is and once you when you talk about who am i then your values be, come to the fore yeah and um that's what to me a woman of value is somebody who knows who she is so unshakable inside of those values they become pillars for her life yeah i love that and i I think a lot of people have no idea how to even go there and how to get there but I I do know that when I studied coaching and started my whole coaching process um certification process one of the first things we did was determine our core values and it's something like people don't even really ask themselves that they don't know what it is and it's something I just created uh, a whole exercise for in my latest book the uh it's called choice points in dating and because you can't pick your right partner or know who you are before you really decide like what is my compass how do i make choices in my life exactly exactly yeah. really at that that's so beautiful good to hear you've got a new book coming out <laughs> it just came out in february oh, nice. um yeah uh, so tell us uh, smita what was were some of those pivotal moments in your life where you started to discover your true value i went through a 
phase in my life in my 20s when I moved out and I started to work in corporates and I had time on my hands at weekends I had time on my hands which I never did have before you know when I lived with my my parents and and so on and my family and um, I started to feel a lot of things coming up like like feelings which were in my teens I hadn't really got present to and the, these feelings were very disturbing in a sense they were almost like um overwhelming to the extent where I started to the, the more the more silence I had in my life in in, the, in those silent periods the more I realized that there was something which was I could not articulate so I started then to explore what that was and in the process I as I explored that as things came to the fore I started to realize that actually one of the things that's super important to me was connecting with people like really you know that that was profoundly important to me and and that was an area that i found myself unable to get on which was really new to me because in my teens as i was getting into my 20s you know until this moment until i started to explore and, and you know really ask myself the inner questions um everything was fine but the moment I asked, then emotions, blocked emotions, started to make themselves known. I didn't know they were blocked. I didn't have the words for it then. So then I had to start to explore and, and, and you know, do all those things. So I started with, with doing something which is very profound in my culture, which is meditation. And I'd seen my dad meditate every day. Um, you know, he was a he. He ever since I was a child, I've seen him. I, I'd seen him meditate, but he never did teach it to me. But I actually watched him, and so that was something that I I felt calling me, and so I didn't know how to do it. Didn't know where to go in those days. It wasn't like now where we have meditation centers and yoga centers everywhere around the corner, but that wasn't the case. So I literally just sat down at home and um, and closed my eyes and tried to do something that I thought looked like meditation. But surprisingly, immediately, um, I started to get very deeply into it. And um, one thing that emerged was that my intuition started to speak to me very clearly. And... Um, uh, very much like I'm talking to you now, in a sense, you know, I could, I could feel the words, I could feel the questions, the answers, I could ask questions, and I got answers. And that was that was the first turning point for me. Because then it started to guide me into things, for example, going into Covent Garden in central London, you know, into the Watkins bookstore, which was a bookstore, uh, I think it's still there, uh, devoted to, they're just dedicated to everything um, metaphysical. And so there were all kinds of things in there that totally turned my life around. So that was that was the first step. And then I got more and more into that and then went into the work of personal transformation. Um, and yeah, it was it was really in going deeper into being able to learn to ask the right questions that then started to bring up answers that made a difference. Well, so you did that pretty young where you started to feel this pull towards something is feeling uncomfortable and then you got deeper into it, found meditation. And from meditation, you found this metaphysical world through the bookstore and then personal transformation work from there. So where did you go from, from that point on? Like you started to expand. So tell us about that. So one of the things that happened very quickly once I started to meditate was I got, I got to have these deep, sort of call it guidance, call it intuition, you know, my inner voice, a higher self's voice, actually, rather than going into the bookstore for metaphysical things, that was something that, 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 that I started to learn more about. But I'd already grown up in a culture which uh, already has extremely deep roots into understanding consciousness, probably the, 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 the biggest gift that is the gift from India to the world is its understanding of consciousness and what that is. And so I really got very deep. In fact, one of the things that happened was I took a sabbatical. Um, I heard, you know, one of the guidance was to literally go to India 
and you know go for six months without a plan you know with with not knowing what I was going to do I literally had to learn that was the journey to India the journey was more about listening to the prompts what to do next who to go to next where to go next those types of things um, more than it was about anything else that actually emerged so I started to learn to trust my inner voice to the extent that's the biggest thing that came up you know in that that next period that was even before I was 20 I think I was 28 or something and before I was 30 so um um so that's what happened is is the next thing that happened was the, the the very first teaching that I got from within guided by Atman you know was really to learn to listen to it and trusting that voice is one of the biggest ongoing journeys I think I've ever undertaken as a human um, uh, aspiring to become a higher being. So, you know, to learn to listen to, for example, the things that got in the way, which are all the usual human things like, you know, um, the, no the, the doubts, the self-doubt, the voice, the critical voice, the inner critic, you know, deciphering um, whose voice that is, why, you know, do I feel so much like, why am I, why, why do I have so much like the sense of shame? Where does that come from? And, um, you know, how can I heal that? And how is that limiting me? And there were so many, so many things. Some of it were cultural, I, I discovered. Some of it were things which are literally just, you know, prevalent throughout my culture. And other things were things that were more familial. Other things were more personal, coming from my own personal, you know, the things that I came into life with, perhaps, you know, uh, the, the journey that I'm here to undertake as a, as a being with perhaps many, many, many lifetimes to in this lifetime to really start to become very, very centered in something deeper other than the content of my flitting mind. So that was the journey that began as a result of um, listening to my inner voice. And then everything that gets in the way of listening to that inner voice, everything that gets in the way of trusting yourself, um, everything that gets in the way of um, finding the courage to live your life, my life, as opposed to, you know, what might have been expected of me to do other things and so on and so on. So um, that's where I went to next. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can imagine that a lot of people listening are inspired by your story, but they're also coming up with their own feeling of self-doubt. Like how could I follow my own inner voice when I try to meditate, all the voices come in, the self-doubt, the, you know, that inner chatter do you have any exercise or words of, of encouragement for people who want to really begin this journey? As a yoga teacher, one of the things that I have been doing more and more of is, uh, from my own practice, sharing very simple ways of uh, calming the mind, very simple ways of disidentifying with the body, the emotions, the feelings in a very fast, quick way, just by through the use of breath, very simple breathing. Now, of course, there's all kinds of pranayam and, and breathing practices that one can do. But for me, one of the things my higher self has taught me is that when you really master something, you're able, to, first of all, to explain it like you would to a, to a five-year-old. And secondly, you're able to practice it. The practices become very simple. And it's that the profundity is in its simplicity. So here's a, here's a practice that I that I have developed, and that works a, a treat. So the the first thing is simply when you close your eyes, and just start to take take a breath, and just begin only to focus on the breath and deepen the breath very slowly, just relaxing the shoulders, just relaxing the face, the body, allowing yourself just to breathe, just to, just very gently, and then taking a little bit more charge of the breath. So you deepen the breath a little bit more into the heart. And then as you exhale, you, you literally just slow the breath down uh, in equal measures as you breathe in, so you breathe out. And then deepen the breath even a little bit more into the, um, uh, the area of the ribcage a little bit deeper, exhaling very slowly. So you're just 
using your breath to very slowly inhale and exhale and, and con- in a controlled fashion. And then again, going a little bit deeper still into the into the belly and so on. So you just are in five breaths. If you can do this, you will just find yourself literally settling down with the breath. And um, in doing that, you start to already begin to to relax a little bit to get a sense of all is well the mantra all is well starts to emerge a little bit more and then bring it more into the forefront all is well all is well and just allow that to become purely your your focus and then you'll notice that as the as the thoughts are coming up you know like like leaves flying in the autumn wind you just observe you become less identified with the thought as being you and more as you know like like the ocean is churning out the waves you, you know it, it's waves so the th- mind is churning out its thoughts so it's a practice and the more um people can practice this the more we begin to realize that actually who I am is the one that's observing all of this content. So I really don't have to get so attached to it. I don't have to identify with it so intensely. It's just stuff that's like the ocean churns out waves, you know, so the mind is churning out thoughts. There's nothing you can do about it. And then very slowly, the the muscle to develop here is simply to remind yourself all is well. The world is not going to end. You know, if I feel a little bit embarrassed today, it's going to go away tomorrow. It's it's okay. Somebody didn't treat me well today. You know, I don't have to carry that around tomorrow. I can just be with it, you know. So um, the research that I've done, you know, from a, uh, there's a a neuroscientist called Jill Taylor Bolt or Bolt Taylor. I can't remember which way around it is. But in one of my videos, I've got a video on this uh, called the 90 second rule. And it's really, she, the, the discovery has been in neuroscience that you, 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 can, you should feel something for just let yourself feel it for 90 seconds. Okay. And then everything beyond that, because that's the amount of time that your, your physiology is doing something with that. Okay. That's when there's electrical charges taking place and so on. But after that, that stops. And so if you, if you continue with that thought or that thing or that feeling beyond the 90 seconds, that's on you. (laughs) You know, that's something that that's, that's a choice. So the practice is really, it's hard because, you know, we've gone through such trauma and people have, you know, we've we've gone through so much pain and so many things in life. So I, I don't want to dismiss that or, or to say it's not valid, but the choice is that if you're ready to, to really take charge of yourself as the extraordinary consciousness that you are, as the extraordinary being that you are, then at some point we have to be willing to to try these things and and find mechanisms that are extremely powerful because the mind is just as powerful as we allow it to be. So that's the practice. And, and I've just released on Spotify, I've got a whole load of meditations on my website um, around this, you know, which which I make it very simple to train the mind. There's one uh, that was just we've just released an album on Spotify, Apple, and all the other other platforms um, called "Calm Your Mind." And there are three meditations in there. One is called um, "Drifting Clouds, Wandering Thoughts," and this one is really very simple. It's beautiful, set to music and so on. And you just uh, you just observe. You, you know, I guide you through how to let go of thoughts, just observing thoughts coming and going and then restore you to an awareness of yourself as disidentified, as unattached, you know, detaching from those thoughts and you start to feel a sense of well-being then. The other one is seeing the wood for the trees, which is when we have so much confusion, we don't know we know which way to look, what to what to what to choose and how to think. So again, set to beautiful music and wind and all kinds of backgrounds. So it's really, really easy to practice training the mind. And the third one is uh, trees in the breeze. Put your mind at ease. So I use nature just to go, you know, just to float, flow with, or um, go with to to help to calm the mind and to really just train the mind to understand in the simplest of ways, because I think it needs to be simple. They're free on Spotify. I think people can listen to them. It's called Calm Your Mind and just put my name in. You should be able Mm -hmm. to listen to it. 
That sounds great. I like the simplicity of it. I think people overcomplicate everything. <laughs> and especially if you're trying to calm your mind, you don't want to have complicated thoughts that are overthinking and over overusing those thoughts because that just makes you feel a little crazy. That we kind of associate uh, complicated thought processes with being intelligent and so on. And to a certain extent, it's true, but it's also something that gets in the way of what we're talking about, which is to actually get an experience of your essential self that is beyond the mind. We just get over-identified with the mind. We get we, we get into the mental gymnastics. And it's very helpful in at one level and understanding, in getting on in the world, in creating material wealth in some cases, in the conceptual area. But in the experiential area, it holds us back. Yes. And as a, as a dating and relationship coach, it's one of the tenets of what I teach because there's so much focus on, do you have a degree and do you have a graduate degree and how intelligent are you? And I teach about feeling and I teach about how to feel into the energy of a partner instead of focusing on all those outer things that don't really represent the, the kind of connection that you really want to have with the person that you fall in love with. And I think people just focus on the wrong stuff. Being able to have intellectual discussions doesn't require a graduate degree. Exactly. I don't have a graduate degree, by the way. <laughs> yes, me neither. Uh, and it, you know, plenty of people who didn't go to college are brilliant and they are really tapped into that lifelong learn, learning and creative learning and creative intelligence and to me, I think it's it's really, can we talk? <laughs> can we connect? If you have ever played small to make other people feel comfortable, or maybe stayed in a bad relationship or job too long because you didn't think you could do any better, I wrote a book for you. It's called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. Each of the 30 chapters contains a life lesson, a story, and an exercise to bring you closer to reaching your full potential. Becoming a Woman of Value is available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle. You talked about your 20s and you talked about being a yoga teacher. Give us a window into who you are today and what you're doing in the world. So actually, it's 25 years of my life from the from 21 onwards was actually in corporate, in hardcore corporate environments, you know, in business, winning large scale business internationally. So so that that's my background and why I meditated and why I did yoga was alongside of that was because I needed something to root myself, ground myself into um, when I wasn't wasn't working. I, it was really my foundation. Um, what am I doing today? So. Um, as in what am I doing today as in, in my life or where am I at in my in my journey of spirituality? Is I'm not clear about your question. Uh, both. <laughs> Whatever you'd like to share. Right. So today, as like yourself, I, I also um, have a coaching practice, um, high performance, transformation and uh, relationships. So the this is uh, so I, I, I led programs in transformation for a good long time alongside of my corporate career. And uh, now I have my own practice and uh, I teach yoga. I'm very, I'm, uh, as I say, I teach yoga, but I'm, I would say I'm more of a, uh, a hardcore yogi. So I'm, I'm more um, um, dedicated to my own personal practice. Uh, that's really fundamental in my everyday life. And I really value that. Um, meditation and so on. I also uh, I'm, I'm you know changing the direction of my YouTube channel. Um, so I'm creating content which I really want to share. Uh, the books, uh, the Carmen Diamonds trilogy. That's again you know an ongoing sort of thing that I share with people in whatever shape and form that I that that I can. Like on this podcast, for example, you know to to make people aware of the of the of the books but why the value of the what the what the value of the books is really that um learning to listen to your inner voice is perhaps the big that voice is who you are not the voice of of of, of all the mind stuff but the but the atman beyond that the the uh, philosophers sages of ancient india have always said the purpose of life is really to get aligned with or integrated with 
that aspect of who you are, that is the journey because we're playing hide and seek with ourselves. We, you know, the human part of our existence is really the realization that actually this is a temporary existence. There is a more permanent reality to my my existence. And that is the the Atman, which is a subset of all of that, all of that, all, all that is in a sense, you know. And so that's the the journey is to I, I'm I'm just on that journey as you could say, you know, um that's really the purpose for my life and everything I do, whether it's teaching yoga, whether it's creating a, you know, whether do making videos, whether it's doing these types of podcasts, is really in service of that sharing that sharing where I'm at so far learning from that what I can from other people and just forwarding that so um those are the things I'm doing uh also I do some MC work so I uh, last week I I a couple of weeks ago when we had Women's International Day I did two events with 500 people each at those you know um so you know um I play <laughs> I yes play. <laughs> Have a good but time. it's all connected. It's all connected to the yeah. same basic goal, life, yeah. life core values that we started with. And what about the future? Do you have a dream for where your life is going? I used to have it, you know, I, I kind of had all these ideas and where I'm at now is I'm just excited by the unfoldment that's taking place. And what excites me now is, is taking on challenges that are just beyond something that I'm good at and then making those into something that I that I become very good at you know like writing the books was a major challenge because I even though I wrote a journal since ever since I can remember and I never missed a day since I was 14 um and and I wrote proposals and you know all kinds of things I never really wrote something that I ended up writing and that was a, a major growth factor in my life because what that allowed me to do was to connect with that voice and connect with it in a way where I could say I want to tell the story in a way that other people can really find themselves in it so while it's my journey uh, the journey is really expressed in a way that they can step into and relate to and they can see themselves in it and then we created all these meditations around that around the journeys in the books so now we have the books um, assisted with guided 12 guided meditations as well um, and now going forward I'm at the edge of what I know always on the edge of consciousness I'm looking to take a leap into the into the unknown take a leap into the unknown take a leap into the unknown and what unfolds there Always, it's something that I'm not doing now that I don't know how to get done, that I don't know how to get to. So I'll be honest, that's what excites me. Um, I have some ideas about where I do want to go um, with my content, with my books, and so on. And they all exist in that space of the unknown. I totally can relate to that. I think there is something excited about being open to the unknown and exploring and following that inner guide to where you don't have to know everything. So let's go to the lightning round as we near the end of our podcast. And the first is a fill in the blank. I used to think I wasn't blank enough. The feeling of not being good enough has always been there. And I, I know it's a cliche because a lot of people feel the same, but I think probably lovable enough. That's pretty universal. And it's good to hear that that people who have achieved a lot in their lives have started with a lot of self-doubt and feeling not good enough, not lovable enough. I think it makes you relatable. The next question is, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming a woman of value? Trusting myself, the ability to truly know like that you can drop me today in some godforsaken place. Yeah, you know, we used to say in back in the day, I don't know if it's politically correct to say it anymore. You know, we used to say back in the day and drop me in the middle of red China, you know, and I'll find my way back. You know, I'll come back stronger and 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 tougher and better and whatever. And that's really true for me now. You know, it was it was something that um that all the things, all the challenges that have presented themselves um have allowed me to to become. And I can truly say today, as much as I may not want certain things to happen, were they to happen, I know that I have it in me, absolutely have it in me. I'm like without a shadow of a doubt. I may not know how to do it. I may not know how to do it, 
but I know how to find a way to do it. I, I'll, I know how to go about finding a way to do it. Right. And that kind of a trust has given me so much peace and, you know, confidence and it's not a confidence that's generated that somebody taught me. It's a confidence that is just authentic mm -hmm. and I don't need to prove it. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal is to trust yourself. And I talk a lot about that in my book too. It's you can't make good choices unless you start to trust yourself. And how do you trust yourself is there's a whole process to it. And you've described your own journey, which I think is really valuable. So the next question is, what is the best advice you can give to a woman who wants to become more empowered? Don't listen to your feelings. On the one hand, you need to feel it, but don't listen to your feelings because they are fleeting. They're, they're temporary. They're not the truth. So while they're a, they're a guidepost, they're not necessarily the truth. So if they limit you, don't listen to them. Don't listen to people either. Yeah, People will tell you all kinds of stuff to keep you where you are. Okay. Keep you, keep you down. And you don't want to, you don't want to take that on board. And some of those people are going to be people you love and people you admire and people that you really look up to. And they're going to tell you now, and, 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 and they'll continue to do that. So they'll continue to, people will continue to find ways, the higher you go, the more, the more that's likely to happen. And so that, again, that, that ability to, to kind of, observe and kind of go, oh, okay, is there is something to that? Is there something that I can take away from this to, you know, to, to do better, to, to grow? If there is, do it. But only for that reason and not for the reason of you can't do this or that or the other. If something is calling you from within, if life is calling you into something and it's something that really excites you, you know, um, then, 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 then whatever out the outer world says, whatever your feelings say, let it go. Listen to that higher aspect of you, you know, that that part of you that's unconditioned by any aspect of humanity. Only you have those answers, not the outside. Yeah. yeah. Next question. What advice would you give to your younger self? I would tell her, I do tell her that she is so courageous and she is so brave. It brings tears to my eyes when I think about that question, because it needs to, you know, it's it, that's she needs to know that she's absolutely beautiful that there is nothing wrong with her and that I would tell her or warn her people will tell her along the way there's a lot wrong with her and that she really needs not to listen to that that she is you know let her don't let your affection get in the way of who you are because your affection is going to bind you and attach you to people that actually you believe in but they don't necessarily have the same feelings about you or towards you. And it doesn't mean anything about you. It's that is a representation of how, where they're at, where they need to heal. Don't let your affections get in the way of your attachments. You know, don't let your affections attach you to people and things that ultimately might end up really hurting you. Good advice. <laughs> what is something that people often get wrong about you? People will see the confidence, people will see the accomplishments and assume that I don't care about them because I'm not constantly affirming my feelings for, for them, you know, that, 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 that somehow I don't care about. So I think uh, that's something that I, I personally, I think I exude with the, with the, with the kind of um, not wanting, not getting involved into the story of people anymore. I think that that's something that that can be misread is that there's a difference between between you know seeing the story not being wanting to be drawn into the drama of their story and fundamentally caring for them that because I don't want to be drawn into their story because I can see it and I'm not not prepared to engage in the drama thank you very much doesn't mean I don't care about you it means it simply means that I have um I'm calling you into a, a relationship of of greater authenticity, of being, you know, genuine. And finally, Smita, how would you like to be remembered? As, as somebody who genuinely made a difference in your life through whether it's one insight or whether it's um, because you read the books and they, they resonated with you uh, and they really got you on your journey into a, a, a another level, somebody who contributed into your life in a really positive way 
and hopefully soulful way. Well, you're doing a lot of really good work in the world and making lots of differences, I am sure, every day through all of the ways that you reach people. Can you share with our audience one link that would be the best way to find you? And the rest will all be in the show notes. Instagram, Smita Joshi 108 or YouTube, which is also under my name. It's a self-discovery channel either way. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and inspiring our audience to really look within, to trust themselves, to go on this inner journey, because it is, it is so gratifying to be able to source your value from within and to really be able to trust yourself. And it is a journey and it's a continuous journey and it is one of the most rewarding. Yes. So thank you so much, Smita. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you for, you know, how dedicated you are with delivering this kind of work out there. I know, I know from my own experience, how much work it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it really acknowledge you for the, the difference that you make, because it, it, I'm sure that so many people will be touched by the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for listening today. If you love our show, please give us a high rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. And I invite you to show up, stand up and speak up as a woman of value. If you would like to step more fully into your value, grab a free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Becoming a Woman of Value on my website, thewomanofvalue.com. Just click the link at the top of the homepage. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to click the subscribe button in your listening app. And if there's something in this episode that inspired you, please share it with others. Because the more we share these inspirational stories, the more women of value we will have in this world. I'll see you next time.